It's got to be here somewhere. You know, this time of year, I start feeling kind of lost at sea. Oh, here we go. Last unit summative assessments. Okay. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, these are really similar to my students' scores. I was really impressed with how well they did with the Treaty of Versailles question. Yeah, I thought this would be a great opportunity to add some beans to the reward jar. Arr, that dropped me rewards. The beans. Why'd you spill the beans, Kyle? Why? Whoa, are you okay? You seem a bit different today. Sorry about that. Nine months is a long time to be at sea. I mean, in a school year. I'm eager for the summer break, and it's making me a little irritable. I totally understand that. I was wrapping up an activity the other day, not paying close attention to the time, when class ended. And for a moment there, I was angry at the bell. Whew. Maybe we should just call it a day and finish the PLC early. No. Bad luck to end a PLC early. Inum's the bones of success for the classroom. But this PLC ain't going anywhere today. There's no rudder, no wind in the sails. Bad luck to end a PLC. Forget I said anything. We'll drift on. You do have a point, though. We feel like we've gotten into a bit of a rut, and we need to add some structure to these meetings. What if we both came up with some ideas and materials to bring to the next PLC meeting, and then we can discuss what we want to do with the final unit? That sounds great. In the meantime, would it be okay if we looked over the assessment data a little more? Sure. Welcome to Launch Your Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. Despite being surrounded by students all day, teaching can sometimes seem like a lonely profession. A great deal of lesson planning, preparing materials, and grading are done on our own. Over time, we as teachers can get stuck in our own headspace, feeling as if we're on an island alone or lost at sea. But ultimately, this way of thinking can blind us to the fact that schools are full of other people who can help us develop in our profession and help our students grow in the classroom. As teachers, we need to be open to the opportunities presented to us by other members of the faculty. Some are more obvious, like official feedback from an administrator's observations. Others require more active planning, like making the most out of time spent with your peer in a professional learning community. And there are those you have to seek out, such as a school counselor. Regardless of which of these faculty members you consult with, keep in mind that you all share the same goal, creating a better learning experience for your students. So today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to discuss how you can develop through professional partnerships. Let's begin by taking a closer look at PLCs. Investing in your community is a wonderful way to feel connected and grow with others. The same goes for your school community. Professional Learning Communities, or PLCs, are collaborative meetups with educators who teach the same content. The objective of these meetings is to meet instructional goals together by collecting data, sharing resources, and supporting one another. I'm about to meet with my PLC right now. Why don't you join us? Hey, everyone. Hey there, Miss Rachel. Coach and I were just reviewing our notes for this week's PLC. I've noticed that my students are really struggling to carry to the next place value when regrouping. I've actually had the same issue with several of my students. Same here! One of the first things you'll want to do is identify areas of growth you'd like to see in your classrooms. Okay, so now we know what we'd like to improve upon during this unit. I feel pretty great about that. Me too! What's the next step? Let's discuss strategies that we can look into before our next meetup. Okay, I already have a couple of ideas. Before your next PLC meeting, you'll want to gather some strategies and techniques to share. Great thinking, Miss Shannon. Thanks. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. See you next week. How did everybody's research go? Great. I read a regrouping strategy where students write the problem in a way that they can see the columns more clearly. When you meet again, come prepared to share your findings with your group. 
The more ideas that you share amongst each other, the more opportunities you'll have to adapt new strategies for your students. Well, I checked in with the instructional coach. She always has really great ideas. Here, take a look. Make sure everyone in the PLC gets a turn to share their research and ideas. This lets everyone involved know that they are equally valued. I really think this will help us out as much as it helps our students. What's our goal for when we meet again? I think we should each try one strategy and then share our findings. That's a great idea. Before you leave your meeting, you'll want to set a course of action. Actionable goals and to-dos keep the ball rolling. Committing to a part of the plan builds momentum so you and the PLC are more likely to make changes for the better in your lesson plans. Way to go, team! I can't wait to see what we come up with. Same here. <laughs> go, go team! <laughs> When we meet up next time, we'll all share our results and formative data with one another and adapt as necessary. Keeping notes in a shared document will help us to stay organized and build off what we've learned so far. After sharing your results, you can come up with more ways to address the same objective or problem. Then, once you have established some teacher-tested successful strategies, you can pursue another area in which to grow. Don't forget that success builds on itself. The more often you problem solve together and take action, the more fulfilling it will be to do it again. Not only are PLCs a great way to help you and your students out in the classroom, but they're also an amazing tool for building relationships with teachers at your school. After all, goals are easier to achieve as a team. Even though you work side by side with your fellow teachers, it's easy to overlook one another. This can happen for several reasons. You spend most of your time focused on your students and classroom, you might not know each other well, or you may have little in common personally. However, it's more pleasant to go to work every day when you can have comfortable, professional interactions with your colleagues. And since your everyday experiences in the classroom are similar, you have a wealth of good teaching ideas to share with one another. Most of all, you have a shared mission to help your students thrive. So let's look at a few ways you can strengthen your professional relationships. Listen to your colleagues' perspectives. Together, you have all the ideas you need to support student learning. Ask your fellow teachers questions about their most successful strategies and contribute yours too. Accept that there will be differences. This is only natural, but if your practices are in your students' best interests, think about ways you can adapt those differing approaches to suit yours. Combine your best practices and watch the ways this benefits your students. Be someone your colleagues can trust. Teachers who can rely on one another, collaborate more, share more, and grow more. You can build a sense of community with one another by sharing your challenges honestly. Teaching is a complicated job and there is no embarrassment in talking about what is difficult. Then, you can seek professional advice from your fellow teachers and provide the same for them in your areas of experience. By offering help and ideas, accepting help when you need it, and following through with your commitments, you build a culture of trust. Finally, model respect. Just as you expect your students to show respect for one another, your students count on you to demonstrate the same with the adults in the building. Instead of speaking negatively about your colleagues, focus on the best in them. Show that you honor their time, ideas, and concerns. When you do this, students get an important lesson about the importance of respectful relationships. So not only do they get the best of all of your teaching, they get the benefit of a positive school climate and a model for their professional behavior in the future. Hey Kyle. Hey Johnny. PLC time already? Yep, and the voyage continues. I'm really glad we decided to add some more focus to our meetings. I'm really looking forward to doing an action plan for the final unit. Definitely. So where would you like to begin? Climate change? Cybersecurity? I was thinking globalization. What about human rights movements? 
Well, we do have to teach them all, but my students struggle the most with globalization. I see you staring at me globalization simulation. Let's have a look then. Nay, I worked too hard just to hand it over. It's not fair you're the only one who has it. I get a little protective over some of my original materials, but there's a lot of value in this simulation, and I think it'll help your students. Here, take a look. Thank you for sharing this. Oh wow, I really like how you've allotted certain students' resources and how they have to work together to create products for the market. They really get into trade agreements. You'll see for yourself soon. Well, in the spirit of sharing, I have some really engaging activities on social media's influence on the world. Wow, this is perfect. Do you mind if I make copies of this? You have a copier in your room, right? Or I could do it for you. I really prefer to make my own, you know, make sure everything's lined up just right. The copier is mine. I'm the only one who can tend it. You know the line gets too long in the workroom. Mr. Pope and Mr. Penley to Principal Martin's office. Yesterday, my administrator observed my class. I'm meeting with him now for a post-conference to talk about where I might have some room to improve. While these meetings can be a little intimidating, I'm not worried because there are simple steps I can take to make sure this goes well. I've already taken an important one. I'm on time. Being punctual gives us the opportunity to thoroughly discuss the observation and shows my administration that I value their time as well. Hi, Ms. Tara. Thanks for coming by. I've been looking forward to discussing my observation from your class yesterday. Thanks, Principal Julian. I appreciate having a second pair of eyes on my classroom. I brought a clipboard, pen, and the Talking to an Administrator worksheet with me. During our meeting, I will take brief notes that I can reflect upon later. This will show my administration that I am dedicated and have a desire to develop and grow. First of all, I think you did a great job. Your transitions between activities were really smooth, and I love your anchor charts. I do want to discuss a couple of areas that I think you could improve on. Okay, great. While this can be uncomfortable to hear, I'm going to be open to constructive criticism. My body language, tone of voice, and attitude will stay positive while I listen to his feedback. I need to remember that the administration and I are on the same side. We want the same outcome for our students. At one point, I noticed a couple of students at the back of the class that were off task and not paying attention. I'm not sure which students he's referring to or what kind of off task behavior, but it's okay. I'm free to ask questions. Not only will I learn, but I'll show him that I want to. Thanks for telling me. Which students were they and what were they doing? Sully raised his hand because he didn't understand and Patrick tried to help him. And they ended up getting disengaged from the lesson. Oh, that makes sense. I'll work on checking for understanding and monitoring my students for off-task behavior. It's important to be considerate of the administration's time by being goal-oriented. This demonstrates respect and encourages positive rapport, which will help keep the communication open. At the end of the meeting, I'll thank him for his time. I'm seeing a lot of progress already, Miss Tara. I'll drop by and check in on my usual rounds. Thanks so much for meeting with me. I'll reflect on your feedback and develop a plan to improve. After my meeting, I sat down with the Talking to an Administrator worksheet and reflected on what we discussed. He noticed that I missed some off-task behavior and student disengagement. I'll work on my proximity control to keep students engaged. Then, I'll introduce color cards to see who in my class is understanding the content and who needs more help. In this sentence, you'll want to use whom because it's in a prepositional phrase. It's part of an administrator's job to conduct observations and provide feedback. If you approach their input with confidence and a willingness to learn, you are not only showing your level of commitment to your students, but also to your administration.
Your administrator isn't the only school leader who can help you grow and develop professionally. While your principal or your assistant principal may be your main point of contact when it comes to performance evaluations, most schools have a whole network of professionals you can feel comfortable reaching out to for other types of support. Here are just a few of the people on your school team and what they can help with. Team Leader Also known as your department head or grade chair, your team leader is your main source for answers to your questions about school culture and what is expected from you on a daily basis. You may also have a mentor assigned to you whose role is similar. When you have a question about how things are traditionally done at your school, your team leader or mentor can help. Instructional Coach The instructional coach is the person to go to when you have questions about curriculum, such as a new math curriculum, the state writing assessment, science, or reading. Sometimes the instructional coach can also give guidance on lesson planning and pacing. Other coaches will be able to help you understand special programs like positive behavior support or character education. School Counselor and Special Education Coordinator Your school counselor and special education coordinator can be a tremendous resource to you when dealing with student concerns. Oftentimes these individuals have worked with these same students and families for years and can provide helpful background information. Keep in mind though, that much of what they share with you is confidential and is for your use only. Wondering why a student seems to be struggling with a particular skill or why it's difficult to reach certain parents? Your school counselor or special education coordinator can help. Keep in mind, you and your school staff are a team. Each member plays an important role. Knowing about each team member's responsibilities will help you connect with the right person to make informed decisions about your students and grow as a professional. Teachers often work independently on tasks throughout the day. This can sometimes lead to feelings of professional loneliness or inflexibility. However, this is not the case. Numerous other faculty members in the school are there to support you. So it's important that as a teacher, you look to create opportunities to develop through these professional partnerships. Although it may be difficult to overcome the solo mentality, ultimately it will benefit you and your students. This month on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue to look at developing through professional partnerships. We'll cover a strategy that focuses on PLC activity observations. We'll sit down with an expert educator to discuss questions that teachers have about developing through professional partnerships. Then at the end of the month, we'll take a look at understanding colleague interactions in U.S. schools. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get our upcoming content and check out launchyourclassroom.com for all your professional development needs. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. Hey, Johnny and Kyle, have a seat. I've been wanting to speak to you about a couple of things. First off, I want to say I've noticed the effort you've put into your PLC this year. I know it's not always easy to work together when you're used to doing things on your own, but I see your PLC growing and benefiting the students because of the work you've put in. Thank you. That's great to hear. I do want to encourage you moving forward to take a closer look at your state standards. They are updating them next year, and you may want to consider changing a couple of topics you're teaching. They're always changing me standards. New topics, you say? Like what? 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 I know it can seem tough sometimes, but don't forget, you're not lost at sea. You're not on your own. You have me, your instructional coaches, and each other. Thank you for the support and input, Principal Andres. Yeah, we'll be sure to dive into those new topics and prepare for next year. Johnny, I'm so glad you're my PLC partner. I couldn't think of anyone better to sail these waters with, regardless of whether they're smooth or rough. Are you ready to finish the year strong? Let's do it. <laughs>